you always wanted a Fujifilm GFX cinema camera? Well, old fast glass did it for us. Look at this. You're watching Cinedy, supported by B&H and CVP. Hi, I'm Johnny from Cinedy, and I'm here with Mark from... Old Fast Glass. How are you? Very good, thank you. Mark, you just announced a new beast. Mm -hmm. It's actually a new camera, mm -hmm. but it's not a new camera. Correct. So please tell me what this is all about. This is amazing. It looks thank amazing. you. Thank you. So the, the Fujifilm GFX 102 came out recently, and as soon as it came out, we knew we wanted to build a proper, what we're sort of referring to as a studio build of the camera because DSLRs and mirrorless cameras have been out for a long time now and the images they create are incredible, but everyone knows they can be very difficult to build out. Rods, cables, adapters, um, it, it, can, it can be frustrating. And what we wanted to do was create something that um, our clients, um, cinematographers and camera assistants would immediately see as familiar places to mount their accessories, plenty of power options, and honestly, one box that just pulls out of the camera, put on a lens, put on a battery, and you can go. Can I call it a cinema camera? Absolutely. And honestly, the, the sensor in the GFX um, 102 is beautiful. It's larger than full frame. It's a medium format sensor. And I, I'm not sure we would uh, make the effort to do this for another camera. But when we saw the specs on that camera and we love Fujifilm color science, we knew um, this is the camera we wanted to do this to. So actually, what did you do here? Because I can see the camera, mm -hmm. the, the camera yep. body is, yep. is still here. Yes. So you actually, the whole brain, let's call it, yes. codex, everything, you never mm -hmm. touched that, that aspect. The brain is there, the brain is intact. We did have to uh, completely remove and reposition the LCD screen on the back. Um, what we like is they did a touchscreen LCD screen and you can get a lot of access to controls right there, right on the operator side. So also on the operator side, we wanted to be able to add as much functionality over there as we possibly could. So how the screen is actually communicating with the camera? The screen is still, the LCD LCD screen still has its original cables that are connecting it to the camera, but we physically tore it off. <laughs> so we didn't have to change that. We didn't have to change the way it communicates with the camera. We just repositioned it. But it is a permanent modification. What are the challenges in building such a camera? Um, obviously, there's a lot of measurements. There's a lot of, uh, to get everything exactly precise um, and get the weight as low as possible, um, but also make it very sturdy and very functional. And there's a lot going on on the electronic side. This has um, remote run stop. Um, that was a big thing for us. All of our clients expect to have run stop. Um, and you know, you can, you know, you can um, trigger this from any FIS system, um, which is really nice. So like just getting through some of the electronics challenges um, to make sure all the power distribution works correctly and everything's getting the proper voltage. Um, th there was a lot that went into that. I saw the video. Mm -hmm. I love what I see here. Mm -hmm. Why can't I buy this? Or maybe not. For, for now, we are a rental house. Um, Old Fast Glass is a rental house. OFG Customs is our, our sister company and that's where we design and build these types of projects. Most of them start out as a rental only item, but we always explore sales as, as a possibility. And um, we are looking into scaling this up for sales. It's, we just built our first two cameras, um, literally finished them this week. So the one I see week. here in the show, those are the only one that exists? The right? only two are, are here at NAB. Um, and, but we'll, we will build more and there's a very good chance we will build them for sales. Tell me a little bit about the accessories mm -hmm. from other manufacturers that you use yes. in order to complete this package. So for us, it was very important for us to um, design what we needed to design, but not spend time designing things that already exist, that are already excellent. So this is, the, it's pretty obvious what's ours, uh, like the entire, all the pieces that go around the camera, and basically the box of it, all that aluminum is us, but there's an Atomos um, Ultra Recorder in here, is the raw recorder. Um, this is a wooden camera top handle. We designed our plate to interface with the spacing of wooden camera. We love it. It's very easy to extend it out. Our other version has a studio build, which has the full handle all the way out. Um, these are C7 um, stainless steel LPL and PL mounts. Um, we've made our own mounts before, but these were perfect and they have amazing access to, um, we have four screws screwing this PL, LPL mount into our aluminum structure. So this is, I would say, one of the most solid LPL or PL mounts on the market. But honestly, one of the things I'm most excited about is we decided to use Aries' new bud 
uh, the Bud One um, base plate, which we think is a really amazing system because we have this beautiful shoulder pad setup. Um, it's easy to counterbalance the camera, and we can swap this out for a lighter weight version of this, stabilizer plates for Steadicam, and you can do it all with no tools. So we wanted to use what was available if we could, but there's also a lot of new, sure. <laughs> new in there. So it's an uh, L, uh, PL mount? LPL, PL combo, oh, yeah. It's a combo, LPL, mm -hmm. PL. Yes, we took the same approach that Aerie's been doing with uh, since the Mini LF and the Alexa 35, where you have a native LPL mount and then a LPL to PL adapter. Since we have, we're, our, our inventory of LPL lenses is really growing, um, and that makes it very easy to mix the two on set without needing to swap a mount with screws or anything like that. What is the weight of this beast? The body itself, um, with no lens on it, is 10 pounds. Good. One more question. Yes. Obviously, suddenly we have a Fujifilm GFX cinema camera. Yes. How did Fujifilm react to this? Because you had some contact with them? Fujifilm was very excited about it. Um, they heard about it recently. And um, I think, I think it, was, uh, it was really a win-win for both of us because um, I think that they saw this as us um, validating their camera for cinema use because it is one of the few medium format stills photo cameras that is a hybrid camera that can do video. Um, but us putting this much time and effort into making it a proper cinema camera for proper professional productions, um, it, it got them really excited that they saw that, okay, these guys get, they get what we're doing, they get how amazing our sensor is. Because Fujifilm did really developed a beautiful sensor and we think people are going to love it. We just wanted to make it easier to use. So actually, of course, you, you don't really keep the autofocus now because of the LPL connections. We don't, but we could. You can attach a Fuji uh, Fujifilm lens to this and you could use autofocus really? if you want to. So yes. it's like an active mount. It is. Um, so if we remove our mounts, we made sure to leave enough spacing in this front um, face of the camera um, to attach the native Fujifilm mount. So if you did need autofocus for something, you can go to Fujifilm's lenses and you can use autofocus. And their autofocus is really, really good. Nice. And obviously the stabilizer, the ID exactly. still work. Yep. Great. Anything that I, mi I, I missed or I forgot to ask? I mean, I think that it is important to note that I think there is some mis misconceptions in the because we have the still photo world and the film world of medium format sounds smaller than large format, as the video world is calling full frame large format. I think it's important to know that this is one of the very few sensors that's actually much larger than full frame. Um, it's a medium format sensor, so it's huge image circle. Um, but we're actually discovering that there are a lot of lenses that were designed for um, full frame, vista vista, and large form, yeah. but still illuminate the entire yeah. sensor. Like this Tribe 7 27 millimeter this is a very wide, very fast lens to put on a medium format sensor. Um, and I think we're actually opening the door for people to see these lenses and this field of view and this depth of field in a completely new way. So it's we're really excited about it. Mark, thank you very much. Great talking to you. Great talking to you. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, thank you very much for watching. And please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.